The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Good morning. My name is Dawn Hager, and on behalf of my colleague, Pastor Bob Scott, we welcome you to our Easter morning worship. Whether you are a first-time attender or a lifelong member, we are glad that you could be here with us in worship this morning. We celebrate the good news of Jesus' resurrection, God's triumph over death. Let us begin with a call to worship based on Psalm 118. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Your steadfast love endures forever. Let all who revere the Lord say, your love endures forever. O oh God, you are my strength and my song. You have become my salvation. Because you are with me, I am not afraid. What can anything do to me? No, I will not die. I will live. I will proclaim what you have done. Yes, on this day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it.
If ever there is a day for us to stand and say what we believe, it would be today. So I invite you to participate in today's uh, Easter affirmation, which comes straight from the words of Scripture. If you have your bulletin, I invite you at home to read along. If you don't have a bulletin with you, then I invite you to listen along. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand and by which we are saved if we hold it fast, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, then to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm really glad that you are here with us today. I'm wondering how it feels for you to be missing your friends, to not be at school, to not be able to laugh and joke with them in the hallways or go out at recess and play with them. I know I'm missing my best friend. I miss being able to see her, to laugh with her, to get a hug from her. I really miss my friend. Well, that's how Jesus' friends were feeling on that morning so long ago. It had been three days since Jesus died, and they woke up one morning very early, and their hearts were broken because they missed their friend so much. And so these two women, Mary and Mary, they got up and they gathered their things and they traveled to the tomb. Now, a tomb is a place where someone is buried. And so he, Jesus was placed in this tomb and they rolled a big rock in front of it and he had been there for three days and the friends went to the tomb. And do you know what they discovered when they got there? The stone had been moved away, and the tomb was empty. And then there was an angel sitting up on top of the stone, and the angel told them not to be afraid. They were amazed. They had never experienced something like this before. And the angel told them to go and tell Jesus' other friends that he was not dead anymore, God was so powerful that God brought him back. God raised him from the dead. And they should go and tell Jesus' friends. And so they did. They went and told their friends. And their friends have told others. That's how we know. And so on Easter, we celebrate that God's love is more powerful than death. And that we have been told to go and share the good news that Jesus is alive with our friends so that they too can know all about God's love and power. Happy Easter, my friends. Jesus is alive. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for always being with us. We praise you for being so powerful, more powerful than death, and for bringing Jesus back from the dead, and for helping us follow him. 
Amen. This morning, let's hear the Easter story as it comes to us from Matthew's Gospel. From Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified, but he is not here. For he has been raised, just as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. But then go quickly and tell his disciples, Tell them that he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and with great joy, and they ran to tell the disciples. But suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, and they fell at his feet, and they worshipped him. Then Jesus said, Do not be afraid. But go and tell my brothers that I go to Galilee, and there you will see me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm not exactly sure when it was, at least a month ago, maybe even longer, as the coronavirus pandemic began to worsen and and as the stay-at-home orders began to take effect, I began to to wonder and to worry, frankly, is it possible that Easter isn't going to happen this year? Is it possible that we're going to have to cancel Easter? Say it ain't so. 
And of course, when I thought that, what I meant was this. I meant our Sunday morning worship service with all of us together. You know, Easter is a big Sunday. Christmas Eve, Easter, the two biggest days of the year, and they're meant to be big, and they're meant to be loud. And Easter is a day when we are dressing up in our new new dresses and our fancy ties that we got, and and we come to the church and we compete with the parrots for our sunrise service, and and we enjoy the lilies and the Easter egg hunts. And it's a day in which we literally pull out all the stops. We ask Tim to pull out all the stops on the organ and sing the hallelujah chorus and Jesus Christ is risen today. There's supposed to be a lot of music. It's supposed to be a big Sunday. It's supposed to be a day with lots and lots of joy. But our celebration of Easter is more muted this year. But here's the thing. In a strange way, our experience of Easter this year may be more akin or or perhaps more authentic to that original Easter morning. And so I invite you um, to hear the story again, to place yourself in the story again, this familiar story, but this Sunday with New Year's. So the story begins with the Marys. We're told Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And I can only assume that the other Mary is is Mary, the mother of our Lord. Both of these women were present at the cross when Jesus was crucified on Friday. So here it is, Sunday morning, before the light has, uh, has, before the sun has come up, while it is still dark, and they are on their way to the tomb. Not because they think something special or wonderful is going to happen today. No, I don't, I don't believe that. I think they have gone to the tomb to grieve. It's the same reason why we go to the grave sites of our loved ones. We go to, to lay some flowers. We go to reflect. We go to pay our respects. We go to remember. We go to weep and to grieve. And so the women are on their way that Sunday to the tomb for that reason. But, but it's at that moment that all, that all heaven breaks loose. As they enter the cemetery and they approach the tomb, there is an earthquake. The, the ground quite literally is shaken beneath them. And the reason for this is because an angel of the Lord has appeared and has rolled back the stone and then in a way that Matthew tells it hops up on the stone as if to say ta-da how do you like me now so the women uh, there are guards there Matthew tells us that there were guards there and when they see this occurrence they faint dead away they begin to cower in fear but the angel says to the women Don't you be afraid. Don't you be afraid. All these soldiers, they may have plenty of reason to be afraid, but you don't because you've come looking for Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that he's not here, that he is raised. Come in, take a look for yourself. Now, isn't it interesting that the first Easter sermon The first Easter proclamation, the first words we hear spoken on Easter are the words, don't be afraid. You don't need to be afraid because God is still in charge and God is still at work in this world. Don't be afraid. You know, most Sundays, most years, we come to Easter and we are not afraid. We come triumphantly, we come joyfully we come expectantly but but not this year this year we come to this day with a a very unsettled world we come this day much like those women came on the first easter morning they came with sorrow and they came with anxiety and they came with confusion and so in the midst of all of that we come the same way today Maybe we need to hear the same words that they did. Don't be afraid. 
Don't be afraid because Jesus Christ is raised. Don't be afraid because Christ is alive. Don't be afraid because Easter happens. But it hasn't happened quite yet. The Marys are told that Easter has happened. They're told that Jesus has been raised, but they have yet to see Jesus. The angel says to them, now go. I have a message for you. Go and tell the disciples that Jesus is raised and that he is going before them and he will meet them all in Galilee. And that's just what the women do. They go. They go. They run to deliver the news. And as they run, I think their joy begins to catch up and overtake their fear. They go. And as they go, as they are doing what they were told to do, as they are acting faithfully, that's when Jesus meets them. Jesus meets them in their faithfulness. And so on this Sunday, as we wonder, where is Jesus and where is he in my life? Maybe it's in the same way. Maybe it's as we go and do and act faithfully. Maybe it's when we watch and wait and pray and listen and do and say the words that have been given to us to say and do the things that have been given to us to do. Maybe it's as we go and love God and love our neighbor as best we can during these times. Maybe it's as we worship as we are worshiping now. Maybe it's as we are acting faithfully that Jesus will show up in our lives too and Easter will happen for us once again. So that's the first part of the good news in this story, but it's not all of the good news. There's more. In fact, we're told that the best is yet to come. As they run and meet Jesus, Jesus tells them the same things that the angel did. First he says, don't be afraid. Live with courage. Live with joy. Don't be afraid. But then I want you to go and tell my brothers. And I love that language. No longer are they disciples. But, but he says, go and tell my brothers and my sisters, those whom I love, that I will see them again when we are all together. Back in Galilee where it all started. And so today we are meeting Jesus, our risen Savior, like those first resurrection witnesses did. We are meeting them in our church homes as one or as two or as a few. Oh, but my friends, there is a day and there is a day coming when this will be over. And it may be a month from now. It may be two months from now. I don't know when things will go back to normal. But there will be a day when we will be able to gather together back here where it all starts for us. Pastor Don and I have talked about this, that we're going to celebrate Easter on this day because the calendar says that today is Easter. But on that first Sunday when we're able to gather back, we're going to have Easter again. Easter happens, and Easter happens when we are all together. And what an Easter that will be as we all walk up and place our flowers in the cross and sing our hallelujahs. That's my promise to you. But Easter is also about a bigger promise. Jesus said he will see us when we are all together. And the promise of Easter is also that Jesus will see us at the end of days, at the end of our days, when we are gathered together in heaven with all of the saints who have gone before us from all times and all places. And when we join those hallelujahs, oh my Lord, what an Easter that will be. So in all these ways, Easter happens. But until that day, until that great and glorious day, may we continue to look for Jesus and to look for his appearing as we go about doing what it has been given to us to do. May we experience the presence and the power and the peace 
of our risen and living Lord as we watch and as we wait and as we pray those words, come, Lord Jesus, come. May we be open to all of the ways that Jesus still comes and Easter still happens as we share what we have to share, as we do what has been given to us to do, and as we love those that's been given to us to love. And as we do these things, Easter happens. It happens today, and it can happen every day. May it be so with you and with me. Amen. Friends, please pray with me. Weeping comes for a night, but joy comes in the morning, O God of power and might. Death has been defeated, and we shout, Alleluia. Let all that we do today be a prayer of praise. We acknowledge that this Easter is like no other, instead of worship in our beautiful sanctuary. We are in the sanctuaries of our homes. Instead of the sound of children running and squealing with delight in our sun-kissed gardens, we gather in our homes, some of us alone. It can be tempting to believe that Easter has passed us by. But you, O oh God, bring light into darkness, life from fear and death. Let us discern new life in the usual places, the touch of a loved one, news of a new baby, the beauty of nature in our backyards, the sound of a friend on the phone. Let us also be open to life in new and unusual places. Who knows where we might find you if we just look? It is daunting in this time to be a resurrection people. Even as we read and watch the news with its anxious reports of illness and suffering. Resurrection eyes are not blind to pain. Resurrection ears are not deaf to cries of suffering. But resurrection people see your goodness that outlasts and outpowers any darkness we can experience. Resurrection people know that the tomb is empty. You have defeated death, and we have cause to proclaim, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Easter is the climax of the story, but it is not the end. You alone can roll away the stone, but we are called to run and tell. We have seen the Lord come and follow, believe and live. And now together, bound by the power, the presence and the love of the Holy Spirit, let us lift our voices in the prayer Jesus taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory Amen. Today we will be taking up not one, but two offerings. The first is our normal, uh, normal weekly offering, which goes to support the ongoing work and worship of this church. However, every Easter we also take up the one great hour of sharing, special offering. Now these funds are used by our denomination, the Presbyterian Church USA, to provide food for the hungry and disaster assistance and even ongoing community relief, recovery, and redevelopment wherever it is needed around the world. So I invite you today to give generously and joyfully to both of these causes. You can give in a number of ways. A check always works. 
You can drop it in the mail, or if you're in the neighborhood, you can drop by the church and slip it in the mailbox outside the church doors. Or you can give online. On our website, you will find a resource tab at the top of the page. Click on that, and you'll find a bar that says giving. Go to that, and you'll find instructions on how to give through our website. Our giving is a statement of faith. It is a concrete way of our living into our faith rather than out of fear. It is a way of saying that Easter happens for us when we live and act faithfully. And we want Easter to happen for others too. So as you listen to the offertory, I invite you to offer your gifts, offer your prayers, and offer yourselves. Let us bring our gifts to God.
Please pray with me. Gracious God, the gift of resurrection reminds us that all we possess comes to us by your grace and providence. May our offerings be a sign of our gratefulness and trust in you. May they and we be used for the sharing of your love, mercy, and justice in the world. Amen. Well, happy Easter to you. And once again, I want to thank you all for participating in today's service in all of the ways that you have. As you go forth from this service, may we be like the women uh, who came to the tomb that first Sunday. May we go forth to show and to share the good news that Christ is with us, that Christ goes before us, that Easter happens and still happens in our world today. So as you go forth, may the grace of our risen Lord be with you. May the love of God, our parent, be with you now and always. And may the communion and the constant uh, companionship of the Holy Spirit bless you, keep you, and use you. Amen. <laughs>